Okay, this latest installment of Change My Mind is regarding the abortion issue. I'm mm. pro-life, change my mind. So probably the most contentious that we've discussed. I would say so. Could certainly be argued. Warning, uh, this one is, is it 45 minutes? It's like 53. It's, it's 53 minutes. So it's very long. And I know that when you're watching this, it can feel very frustrating. I know I did. So I, I think it's important to lead with where this conversation ends up because that will really help you understand the context of the conversation. So when would it be okay, I guess, to put limitations, let's say on abortion? Limitations. What, when is it okay? Because we've, we've acknowledged viability is not consistent, um, but you're okay with it anyway. You're the only one who's valuing the rights of, of one being over another being, the mother over a child, because you're the one who's actually proactively terminating a life, and you're okay with that. I'm simply saying no one has the right to terminate another life, just like you don't have, it's a non-aggression principle. You don't have the right to hurt me, I don't have the right to hurt you. I'm saying that person doesn't have the right to hurt that baby. You're saying it does. So you're saying her rights supersede that of the other life living, growing inside of her. So at what point is that okay or not okay, I guess is where it comes down to. It's dangerous to put any kind of limitations or controls around that because she in the end is the one responsible for that and in and and those circumstances. And I, I don't think that it's entirely fair to judge them without being in her shoes. I'm, I'm not sure what people felt about the decision that I made, but it doesn't, but that doesn't, again, that doesn't change the essence of what is moral, what is a life. It's like saying, well, listen, I'm against slavery. I think it's bad. But if someone else makes that decision, I have no right to judge their right to choose slavery. Because at one point, that was considered okay. It doesn't matter what our opinion is if that's a life. And that's why it's the only question I would say that really needs to be answered before we have any other discussion. So the moment of conception, that's where a woman loses all ability to make any decisions? Or... No, 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 no. You, you act as though I'm anti-choice. That's not true. Well, how can you be pro-life and pro-choice? Sure. I support four choices. Okay. Contraception, abstinence, motherhood, adoption. Okay. The only one I have a problem with is the fifth one. That's murder. Murder. Yes. So you don't even use the word abortion. You just use the word murder. murder. Okay, killing. What is killing? Let's define. What's, what is killing? What's the definition of killing? Killing would be the cessation of... The forcible cessation of someone else's life, right? Murder or killing. Well, let's, 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 I mean, let's, let's kill, I'm trying to see... If, I can kill the tree, but I mean... That, that's, okay, killing as it would relate to a person. Would it be the forcible termination of someone else's life? Killing. Right. Okay, yes. right. Now, what is murder? It's the cessation of a formed life. It's killing with intent, right? Well, to simplify it. Otherwise, it's manslaughter or whatever sure. else. Sure. Okay. So we agree on murder. So if that's a life, how is abortion not murder? Because again, at different points, it's not. It's not. It's not viable. It's let, let me answer your question with see. as much specificity as I can. You said, y yes, I believe that once that unique human DNA is created that's separate from the mother, separate from the father, to an entirely new person, yeah, I don't support uh, the forcible termination. So that's my view to be, just, just so I'm very consistent. So let's look at the fetal development. Where is it okay for you? What point is it okay to kill? So why do I think that's important? We don't do a whole lot of editing with the Change My Mind series. That's what people really like about it. Mm -hmm. in, in this case today, we're gonna provide a little bit of commentary again because it's 53 minutes long. It'll be intermittent, it'll be brief. Um, I think it's important for, for you to see this and for you to note that some people, it doesn't matter how convincing your arguments are. M maybe my arguments aren't that convincing. Uh, it doesn't matter how civil you are. Sometimes you're not going to get anywhere. And often with, you know, when you do Q&As, whether it's me at UMass or, or Ben Shapiro answering these, these questions and you see like, you know, these montages, swatted down leftists. It's super entertaining. Yes, it's super entertaining, but you don't see those quiet moments afterward where that person, sometimes they still think they're right. Sometimes their mind isn't changed. Sometimes you run into someone, in this case, I was wondering, my gosh, the vi we, we go through viability, you'll see, we go through the idea of, of uh, obviously viability outside of the womb, also the idea of, of sentience, all, all this is kind of covered today. And I found myself frustrated and it, and it is hard to identify sometimes, okay, mm -hmm. is it me not doing a good job? Or is this somebody who whose heels are so dug in their mind won't be changed? And I think that when you see this, this woman looked at that chart, looked at a nine month old baby and said, I don't care, no abortion laws. And so 
I, I, I don't know what to say to that. And you realize there is no changing, there is no common ground there. There's no, viability doesn't matter. And looking back on this conversation, if you th think it seems mm. like circular logic and it's frustrating, it's because it doesn't matter. She's okay with aborting a nine-month-old yep. baby anyway. Yeah, yep. that's why you're, you're never going to pin her down on any specific issue, as you'll see that, like you like you discussed, you're never going to find a place to agree upon because she's that's not her end game. But she brings these up as smoke screens. Smoke screens. Nice Absolutely. lady, but she brings up, well, I think it's about viability. Well, I, I, what about rape and incest? She doesn't care about any of those things because she looked at the, the, the graph of the fetus, ba zygote fetus baby, to use her words, and said, nowhere, no abortion ethics laws. completely. And I think this is important because a lot of people sometimes will send us emails and say, well, how do I have this person who's coming over to Thanksgiving, a family member, how do I convince them? Sometimes you need to sit in the pocket, you need to take as many swings as you can, you need to try and change their mind as, as best as possible, and you need to accept that it won't happen anyway. And, and it's hard, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow because Obviously, if you're someone who cares about changing minds, you're going to look back at yourself and say, gosh, could I have done a better job? Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe you can. Sometimes it's just somebody who says, abortion up to nine months, no laws at all, period. So with that being said, that context, uh, let's watch this video and kind of take you through the series of arguments that brought us to that conclusion. Jen, Steven, nice to meet you. All right, Jen, well here, you can hold this if you want. Okay. Um, just, you know, you know, talking to the, yeah, you're talking to the stick. Change my... Beg your pardon? Change, so I'm just supposed to tell my No, story. you just talk talk to me. Yeah, we're just having a conversation, so. Okay. Jen, I'm Steven, I can hold it if you want me to. Yeah, that That's fine. Better. Yeah, I know, sometimes people get a little, a little, a little more formal. Things. I don't, I don't bite, so. All right, uh, I appreciate it. Before we were in setup, you were really quick to say, okay, is that, is, you seemed surprised, you said, is that for real? when you saw the sign, I'm pro-life, changed my mind. Why, what was so surprising about it? Um, in my experience, dealing with um, pro-life, um, either protests or uh, discussions, normally it's not change my mind. Normally um, it's, uh, they show pictures of actual abortions or trying to get sure. women or shame them into decisions that they've made it's not really about having um you know a repartee it's more about kind of uh either a, a religious ideology or you know their personal ideology and just kind of trying to force that on you rather than sure trying to have an understand that, having a conversation where we can understand each other right and where we're coming from and why we have these different values right and also because we're across from the art museum so i didn't know if it was uh experiment like a social experiment to see what people you thought it, you thought it just might be ironic I, was at, I just thought I would ask okay no yeah it, it is for real so I am pro-life okay. um, and uh, you know this is this is a series we've done it on gun control we've done it on free speech uh, just listening to the other side uh, giving someone who genuinely believes uh, from the opposite side of the political cultural spectrum mm -hmm. than I do to to change my mind to convince me and have a uh, uh, a respectful but critical dialogue of, of issues that you know we all talk about in today's political realm, but often it's just it's shouted about. Right. So I am open to having my mind changed. Yes. And I have an international relations degree. I've worked for the United Nations. I've worked for the State Department. So I'm very much about understanding and coalition building and sure. discussion. I'm, I am not about the shouting. Okay. So um, also my daughter is standing right here. She's. A wonderful, kind example, honor student. Um, I had her when I was 16. Life is very important to me. Um, but recently I had a different kind of um, experience. So as I promised, we'll keep these commentaries really brief, but one thing you'll notice with Change My Mind, anytime someone comes up who's really hardcore against our viewpoint, they have invariably set up some kind of a victim status. Almost always. Trans disabled, I'm literally autistic. I'm literally autistic. In this case, someone who <laughs> needed an abortion out of a medical necessity. They use it because when they feel their argument is, is on shaky ground or their position, they revert back to it, you'll see. Mm -hmm. I am um, married. I also, uh, during my experience at the State Department, uh, was a prisoner of war, so I have very severe PTSD that causes a seizure disorder. Mm -hmm. And I was on seizure medication uh, when I found out that I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but when fetuses uh, are developing, it's actually nerve bundles that create, you know, the arm or the leg or fingers or whatever. Sure. 
and seizure sure. medication by design is created to um, limit nerve uh, bundles and, and certain uh, synapses and certain processing mm -hmm. because a person with a seizure disorder means that they're firing too much or in a way that they shouldn't be. Okay. So um, found out that I was pregnant, went to uh, my OBGYN, the same one that delivered my daughter, and um, literally on the sonogram watch my baby die cardiac cell by cardiac cell by cardiac cell not because of anything a choice that I didn't make not because I wasn't That's, not because the child awful. was outside of a marriage not because and there was nothing that I could do I could either continue to at first it had seven cardiac cells and then we went back to another sonogram and it had four mm -hmm. and then it had three and then it had two so my options were to literally let the fetus die and begin rotting inside of me or to go to a clinic based on Texas law and get it taken care of before I had to actually physically experience Jeez, the that, that death. Right. Um, so to me, um, based on the safety of you know my, my safety and, and, and if I didn't have that, that option available to me, um, and the trauma that that, that that would have caused. I think that there are unique uh, situations, especially, um, you know, uh, when a woman's been, you know, raped or, or whatever, that, um, that that that's something that should be available to them as, as a decision that, that, that they make. Okay, can I ask a couple questions? Sure, of course. So you first came in, I know you said that your, uh, you said life was very important to you, but you didn't yes. say pro-life. So can we, I guess, establish what that means first before I kind of want to unpack the personal story, which I can only imagine is harrowing. I've never been through that. I'm not going to act as though I can relate to that. Uh, I'll do my best to, as, as we discuss it. But you said life is very important to you and then went into that story. What does that mean? I fought for a life my entire life. I risked my life for other people's lives. That's why I went into international relations. Okay. I um, worked at the United Nations. I was very successful at setting something up for people that live in rural areas, um, setting up social and economic development for them. Okay. It's something that I dedicated my, ed dedicated my education to. It's something I dedicated my career to. It's something that I was uh, eventually captured by um, rebels in, in West Africa you know, trying to still fight for. Right. Um, so it, it's not something that I take lightly sure. at all. Um, but the um, option for a woman, especially given the position that, that I was in and, and when my obstetrician that I I'm had- I'm gonna hold this a little closer because of all the ambulances. So forgive me, I don't mean to intrude, but it's, no. we won't be able to hear you that well. Go ahead. But when I um, went to my obstetrician that I, when I was pregnant with my daughter at 16, or 15 actually, I had her when I was 16, um, she didn't say, you know, what are you doing? Go okay. take care of this. So you wouldn't consider, so you asked if we were serious because you, you definitely don't consider yourself pro-life then, in that sense? Not in that sense. Okay. Um, so my, my next question is, you used the word you said rather than endure that trauma. Right. Uh, did you mean that for the baby or yourself? I meant it, I guess, Primarily, watching it every time I went in was was increasingly more traumatic. Watching each cardiac cell die off was sure. increasingly more traumatic. Do you mean for for you or traumatic on the for, uh, my, for me and for my husband? Okay. Right. So um, at that point in time, um, in ter it, depending on what you believe. The nervous system hadn't really been fully formed, so I don't know how much trauma the actual, but it was dying nonetheless, and there was nothing that, that we could have done at that okay. point in time based on the medication that I was taking. It's interesting to me that you, you just used the word dying. Why would you use that word? Because its cardiac cells were dying. So without those cardiac cells, its heart stopped and then it... Sure, right. but you said it was dying, not mm -hmm. cardiac cells, it. So that would, I guess, would we agree that that, is, that was a life? That it was a potential life. Now, important to note here, this is not a debate tactic. This is actually very important when discussing an issue to find out what, what your terms are, to define them so you're both understanding mm -hmm. issues. And um, notice how she sort of hops, she, she jumps from word lily pad to word lily pad using her own definitions. Absolutely. That happens a lot. And now it makes sense because she doesn't care where life begins anyway. She uses the word dying. She uses the word cell. She talks about heartbeat and then backtracks. 
because none of it matters. We're okay with abortions up to nine months. Let's keep that context. Was well, it a potential life or a life? It was a potential life. Okay, can, we, can you help me with this, uh, again, being pro-life, differentiating between the idea of the potential of life versus a life? So when you say that is a potential life, potential for what? Uh, a potential to grow into a um, baby that could self-sustain on some level outside of its mother's womb. So you mean potential human. So the potential human is fulfilled into actual human. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear here so we understand the kind of the, the terms we're following. Mm -hmm. The potential human then becomes a human when it is sustainable outside of the womb. I think that that's, I think that that's true. I think that, that until that point it is an, a decision between because it, it is completely dependent on on the mother. Sure. So to enforce certain laws or certain acts on her that the baby wouldn't be able to survive otherwise, um, I don't think is exactly pro-life. I mean, if you could extricate the baby and put it in a you know incubator pod or, or something, then you know maybe that would be more ideal. But um, forcing a, a woman who, you know, in my situation was just taking seizure medication, you know, sure. because of whatever. And, and again, not that it matters 100% whether you're married or not, but a lot of people say, you know, but I was. And yeah. it wasn't a, an economic situation. No, no, I, I, I don't want to get into at all any of the economic or the, right. the moral arguments or religious arguments. I don't think that does, I think it does a disservice to, to everybody when we're having this discussion. So I'm, I'm just interested in this, this concept you said of sustainability, and you mentioned bringing it out and putting it into an incubator. So the potential for human life, we're now saying, is fulfilled as a human life when it can survive outside of the womb. Um, then you mentioned an incubator, but with technology, for example, now you have babies who can survive earlier than ever before. That's true. So does that change the value of the life, let's say, uh, a baby today who's premature, who can survive three months, four months early outside of the womb due to technology as opposed to a baby in the 1940s? Is today's baby's life more valuable just because of our technology? I don't think it's more valuable, but I I think it speaks more to um, a woman's rights because a lot of people that are pro-life, um, I, I understand that. I grew up uh, with a uh, you know fundamentalist Christian uh, mother. Um, I, I'm. Well, I understand, but let's put that on the table. No one here is a fundamentalist Christian. I'm just, I'm just saying, in terms of you know my viewpoints, and they've, sure. they've been very you know varied, and in, in terms of you know my own upbringing. But at some point, that child you know becomes a reality, and yeah. there's a mother that's involved, and um, there uh, there seems to be a lot of support or a lot of fervor around the pro life movement, and then a lot not a lot of support about what happens after that point and putting certain women maybe such as the situation I was in or other you know situations that are and not giving them the right to choose what happens with their own bodies again trying to keep this brief notice how she has not answered the question at all regarding the value of that life born today versus the 1940s because I was using her own premise mm -hmm. of an incubator uh, and now she's on to supporting the baby after it's born. In other words, free stuff, free healthcare, free college. <laughs> this is sort of the bumper sticker logic that we move to, and it's important to bring them if back you're really to the point. Pro -life, then to right, if you're really pro life, then X, Y, and Z. Free stuff. Um, I, I try to bring her back here, again, assuming that we can find common ground. Now remember, she's okay with abortion up to nine months with no restrictions, period. I didn't know this at the time. <laughs> and what happens but, with their But we've just features. agreed it's not, right, it's not your body at that point if it's a baby in an incubator. Right? right? That's a life. Right. So we have potential but is the life movement going and to then life. take care of that baby in the incubator? Well, that, that's not what we're determining right now. What we're talking about is I'm pro life, meaning uh, I believe that that's a life. So it, it's first important, I think, if we're going to have a discussion and determine where we disagree, for example, as to where life begins, right? Okay. So according to what you just said, it's not life, it's potential life. Mm -hmm. Now, then we talked about technology and sustainability. So, right. uh, would you support abortions up until the moment of um, birth? How, where does where is the line end then at that point? What makes it okay versus not okay? When is it a life? That's an interesting question. Personally, 
Um, and I've never been in the position of someone who's had to have one. Uh, I find partial birth abortions grotesque. You'll see later on, though, she really doesn't because she doesn't want to put any limitations on them. And this is kind of a hedge, too. Personally, but I can't push it on someone else. Well, personally, I find murder wrong, but it's not my... It's not my position to tell someone else if they can or cannot murder. That's why the, the, the definition of where life begins or whether or not it is a life, at this point she's effectively conceded that it is, matters so much. But some people just don't care anyway. Okay. Um, to me, that is a viable life. Um, that okay. is unnecessarily destroyed. And I think that there's um, parents out there that are willing to adopt or, or whatever that would be willing to, to take over if the mother is, is that desperate in, in, that, in that circumstance. Um, and then my understanding is that that happens uh, either after six or seven months of, of the pregnancy. Um, typically when, when, the, when the baby, you know, if it were fully born, right. would be viable. Right. Um, so I think that that's kind of um, maybe uh, in terms of when it's a life, when it is viable outside of the womb or uh, outside of, you know, I guess, or, or within, um, you know, science or an incubator. Um, but at, at that point, then I think that there needs to well, before be more you go attention on. to what's going to happen at, at that point, because the discussion of when life starts is important, but, but also then what happens to well, the Well, hold on, before, before we move on, like to give, you, to give you an example, right, because I'm pro-life. Sure. Um, so you, you, I, I understand that you want to move on afterwards and we'll probably get into the idea of a social safety net, healthcare, I understand where you're coming from. But before we get there, right, I'm pro-life, the idea is to change my mind on this or, or find where we disagree. Um, before we move on to another discussion, let's say you're driving home tonight, right? right? And you see someone in the road. And you have plenty of assuming you're not going to hurt anyone by stopping, pumping the brakes. Do you stop? If I see someone on the road? Yeah, to not hit them. Yes. Typically. I would too. I think we're probably both decent human beings. Now, let's say you're same scenario. You're driving home tonight. You're not entirely sure, but you're pretty sure you see someone on the road. Do, do you stop? For the most part, yes. Unless yeah. I see that person with, I don't know, like uh, a chainsaw. No, 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 no. I'm just saying if you're seeing or... someone crossing the road, yeah. you stop, you know it's a person. And let's say you weren't sure it's a person, but you saw someone crossing the road and you could stop, would you stop? Typically. Because you'd err on the side of not ending a life, right? Typically. And so that's the discussion we're having here is, I haven't heard an answer on it, perhaps uh, I've, I've missed it. Where does life begin? Because if, if we don't know entirely, of course, I would say we both agree you have to err on the side of, of uh, allowing, yeah, of, of, of allowing the possibility that that's a life. So where does life begin? I think as far, it's the most important question. We can't move on from that conversation to uh, what happens after birth if we don't agree where life begins. I don't know if that's entirely true because that's also very important. It's important, but not if we're, if we're killing a life, that's more important than providing it, let's say, with free health care if we're killing a life, right? So we have to get to that point. Where does life begin? What constitutes a life? Okay, and then also what constitutes... I've, I've answered a lot of questions, so and, and I appreciate your empathy regarding my situation and admitting that you've not been in that circumstance before. What... Given my circumstance, do you think would have been a better decision? Well, again, all of these questions are answered if you can answer the first question, which is the most important question for you to determine your position. What determines a life? Where does life begin? I have answered it. When it's viable outside the womb. When it's viable outside the womb. Um, but I, I, I don't think that you have answered it that way. So we say, for example, that a, a baby born in New York City because of the technological advancements they have to make it viable outside the womb is that's a life and that exact same baby at that same gestation period is not a life in West Virginia where it wouldn't be able to be viable outside the womb. What determines viability? What do we mean by viability? Maybe I'm getting confused it's there. ability to live outside of the womb with either with the assistance that's available or because it's matured to that point within its mother's womb. Well, one thing you notice she uses a lot of words like personally, primarily, mm -hmm. notably, 
most likely to hedge her bets. And she tries to go to the personal scenario. That's why it's so important. She set up me personal victim so that she can go back to it when she hasn't answered the question. And if this is where we get to the point where if it seems like circular logic, she claims that she's answered with viability, but she didn't really answer the question of it does a point in time, 1940s versus today, does geographical location determine the value of life? She hasn't answered it. Mm. The reason it's starting to get circular, this is why I wanted to show the, the ending first, is because she doesn't care anyway. She's just trying to, she, she, she's just completely unwilling to concede ground. And this is, I should have recognized this here and probably just jumped to the fetal chart. But being a dumbass, I thought I could <laughs> maybe have a civil conversation and, and convince her. But I didn't realize, like, I thought maybe there's a middle ground. I didn't realize her middle ground was eight months. Eight months. <laughs> okay, but you mentioned an incubator. Right. So let's say there's no incubator I was within about, access. Like, Matrix style, like. Okay, you know. so science fiction. Not uh, science fiction. I mean, I don't think we're too far away from it. I'm just saying that. No, we're not. It still it exists right now. I mean, it, more babies are, are viable than ever right. before. Exactly. Um, and uh, again, but the viability would be determined by geographical location. Sometimes. So does does that determine the value of human life? I think it does actually, and it has proven geopolitically that it has determined life for... So you would agree with that? You would say a life, for example, in the West Indies is worth less than a North American life in Lenox Hill Hospital? I think that's the reality of the situation. So right there, in order to avoid the question, she sort of presents this cynical viewpoint. Well, I think we've seen that, meaning the human rights issues that occur in third world countries, but then tries to, to, to sort of shift away from us. So do you believe that? Because the question was, again, where do you believe life begins? And she's mm -hmm. saying, well, we've seen that society and the technology determines it, and then tries to whole play the whole, uh, the, the unfortunately angle, but she's the one who presented it. I don't necessarily agree with it or think that it's optimal, but I think that that is the reality that we have to deal with. And I think that the reality that I had to deal with was not optimal either and that sure. I was not given very many other options except for literally sit here and, and watch it progressively die. There's that word die again. Until its last heartbeat or, you know, try to... Who, whose heartbeat? The fetus's heartbeat. Um, the, the, the other life's heartbeat. The fetus's heartbeat at six weeks that was not viable that had gone from seven cardiac cells to two. Right. Right. But you were talking about how traumatic it was. That it would have been traumatic to continue to just go to the obstetrician and watch it die further instead of taking some... Die. This, this comes back to the issue. My, my issue is I'm pro-life changed my mind. I, 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 if, if entertain this thought for a while because we talk about viability, right? Well, viability or sustainability, there's a certain level of dependence, obviously, in all stages of development, and certainly after the birth. I mean, most babies would not make it more than half a day after the birth if not for someone else taking care of that baby, right? right? So uh, we have to determine what viability is, what dependency is. Older people, there are some older people who are entirely dependent, who are mm -hmm. entirely non-viable without assistance. I still say that they're a human life. We have people who are in comas who are not viable without people taking care of them. I still say that's a valuable human life. When you get outside of the scientific realm of life, and, and you've kind of used this term yourself when you talk about another heartbeat dying, ending that life, um, after conception, right, there's a unique genetic code mm -hmm. that determines male pattern baldness to eye color to right. sex to the heartbeat, which is separate from yours immediately. Mm -hmm. um, it's the only consistent line to draw to determine what life is. Outside of that, it's circumstantial. And that's where you end up, as in your boat, you know, valuing certain lives over other lives. I guess you could say that, but it's kind of like saying, well, um, you know, for, and then this is an oversimplification, obviously, when we're discussing humans, but, you know, like, um, uh, a, you know, a chick uh, hatching, you know, too early, what's the responsibility there? A tadpole, you know, leaving its little egg where it's got its, you know, nutrition, and then you know not being viable there it, it's 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 not um though while they are two separate questions they are completely distinguishable in, in terms of what the end result is and so we can talk about when life starts but there has to be a discussion about viability and and healthcare and, and women's rights in or in or mixed in that i i don't know i mean what do you think for example, a woman that 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 conceives a child as the as a product of rape. I mean, what 
what do you think honestly her her option should be well, what, what I think wouldn't change whether that's a life or not, right? Knowledge nor ignorance changes the very nature of something. So it still comes to the question whether that's a life or not. What I think about rape is that rape is terrible. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change the circumstance that there's a life growing inside of that woman. Okay, so that woman's life somehow is superseded by... No, 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 not at all. But when being forced to carry that child would... No, I, I would never force anyone to carry a child. So, then what are the other options? No, I'm not, I'm not forcing anybody to carry a child. Um, I'm simply barring someone from killing a life. But you can't have it both ways. You There's no having both ways. I'm not forcing... The rapist has, has committed an evil, evil act. Right, but it's And so done. I'm simply saying it's that you done. can't it's meet an evil act with an even greater evil, which is the termination of a life. I'm but, not forcing anyone to bear a child. I would never do that. But how do you say that then conception is where life starts, but you're not going to... But you would never agree with forcing someone to carry a child if a woman that I'm had not. conceived as a, con as a consequence of a rape, that's why she was carrying a child. You would say right. you would never force that on anyone. No, of course not. But that would be the rea that would be her reality. That there would be a, a life, according to you, growing inside of what? her that had started, and and then what? For example, right now, if you were to say, "I forced you to give this interview," no, is that no? But let's say you said it. Okay. Would that be true? No. So, because you say something or because you think something doesn't change the nature of it, correct? So, because you say I'm forcing a woman by not allowing her to terminate a life doesn't change the fact that I'm not forcing anyone to carry a life. By not giving there was a her crime a... occurred, and then I just don't believe in meeting evil with an even more evil act. I understand what you're saying, but by not giving her the option, you are. Well, not giving her the option, again, of killing a life, of murder is what you're no, discussing. It, it doesn't if, change by, the nature of it. But by not it. giving her the option, then you are forcing her to carry a rape child. No, I'm not. Then what other option does she have other than to carry it? Well, it would be like saying you're being forced, for example, to take care of your child because the law says that you have to feed that child yes. even though it's completely non-viable without your intervention. You entered into a social contract when you decided to have sexual intercourse with somebody willingly and you understand one of the Correct. consequences of that might be procreation. See here, she doesn't see the irony in exactly what she says, the consequences might be procreation. Now, we've gotten into the rape discussion, which, does, again, it doesn't matter because she's okay with an abortion up to nine months. So this was more of a philosophical point. I tr tried to explain that simply ignorance doesn't change the nature of an action. Whew, missed. So a uh, big swing and a miss. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let, let, let's try and bring it back to the vast bulk of abortions. But again, it does, why is she bringing up rape? Why is she bringing up the idea of partial abortion? None of it matters. That's why I thought people need to see the conclusion first. You'll see, let's, let's get back to uh, nearly all abortions, which of course aren't, aren't from, from rape. No, that's not why. Well, that's... We're the, talking about the nature of what life is, right? This is the, the deep root, of the, which seems that you continually av avoid it. I'm not it. avoiding it. I'm saying that, that there are consequences beyond that, but without examining it, it's... Okay, it, but it's let's, a fascinating let's, let's agree on that. Let's say we give you that. Starts. Let's say we give you that. Okay, let's say we give you that. Let's say rape, incest, right? The less than 0.5% of abortions. Let's say we give you this. Okay. So then, let's get that off the table, give it to you. Um, what about the vast majority of abortions, which we both know are committed because of convenience? Would we both find common ground there that, that that's immoral? That that's terminating a life and that's immoral? I would say that based on my experience in life and based on things that I've been exposed to, that I think that there should be, I think people should be held to a higher level of responsibility for their actions. Okay. And that I do think life is sacred. But for anyone to go out and, and judge and say that this person got into the situation because of um, convenience or irresponsibility is, is an over simplification of, of most of those circumstances. And yes, I do think that there should be, like I said, increased responsibility and, and more education, but I don't think that that should take away the right that the woman has to know in her own situation, in her own abilities, what 
what she's what she's capable of of doing and capable of, of caring for and cap and the life that will then exist beyond those nine months for the rest of its life. I don't think that that. that I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see what your your answer was I there. Just, What's it was? I don't. Do I think that it's immoral? That's that was your question. Yes, to end a life. To end a life when it's let's get rid of rape and incest off the table. So I'm trying to find some common ground here because we both know statistically the vast majority of abortions are not committed for that reason. Um, so if we take the giant bulk, statistically almost all of abortions that are currently being committed in this country based on convenience uh, or inconvenience, can we find common ground and say, okay, terminating a life, which I think we both agreed upon, is immoral? Terminating a life in terms of, like... Abortion. Abortion yeah. is immoral. Immoral. To kill, to kill another life. Oh, I'm sorry. To kill something. To kill a person. To kill a person. I'm trying to be as very clear in my terms as possible. I know, because I, you've been somewhat vague. I want to make sure that I'm not misrepresenting what you're saying. Yes, to kill another human being is immoral. To kill another human being is immoral. Okay. I want that. I agree with that. But I think that... Again, you need to be careful about the definition of of when that starts, and um, that because there are so many extenuating circumstances, having actual laws or litigation in this country where I would have had to seek some sort of I don't know, like waiver or something from my doctor given my personal circumstances mm -hmm. is also a myth. Here's something I found really fascinating right here. She admits that killing a life, killing another human is immoral, but then she says we have to be careful about how we define, define that life because of circumstances. When have, when has circumstances ever determined science? Yeah, I know. And that, that's where I, I should have realized at this point because it, it, all of her arguments rest in the circumstantial, which which cannot be proven or questioned, and and you see that as we it, it, it progressively uh, it it gets less pleasant. It seems that when people it seems a very common thread when we have these conversations, someone comes in and says, "I am this, therefore it's different for me." What I'm trying to do is get on the table here the vast majority of abortions and determine when life begins. But there are no two circumstances that there are the same. There in absolutely term, are. In there term, absolutely are. Yours is a very extreme case. Yours, your, yours is a very extreme it's case. It's not actually. And I what, had a very close friend that had the same thing happen to her, but except that happened statistically to her Statistically it months. is. Uh, statistically it is. Statistics and these facts matter, and especially when we determine laws, when life begins. If those laws existed, then she and I would both be in very different boats. But what if that saves billions of lives? What if that saves hundreds and hundreds of millions of lives? Again, if we need if we need to have a conversation as to where life begins. And if we agree on that, if we don't agree on that, then that determines whether, you know, killing this life or potential life as someone sees it is morally acceptable or not. Because maybe it's it, it, in some extenuating circumstances, we would say, okay, in this instance, this is moral for me. But what about the hundreds of millions of lives that have been killed and ended? Can I ask you a question? Here's the point where she hasn't answered any of my very framed in, clearly defined questions. And so she asks me if this is religiously based. Now, let me ask you, have you he heard me make any religious argument here? None. No. So, it, Your Honor, I object, but this is what happens. No. Is your belief system uh, primarily uh Spiritually based, religious based? Nothing that I've discussed here has anything to do with that. No, but I'm asking Purely you, science. where do you, where, where is this? Where I, I, I don't think that's relevant. It, I think what's relevant, relevant is determining where life begins. Because you haven't be answered. I actually have answered several times. You've said viability, but it's been re remarkably inconsistent. No, so, it hasn't. Yeah, it no, has. No, I've said outside of the womb or outside of scientific. So the value of life differs from, say, West Virginia or South Africa than the United case. States. And you support that. You're saying that's okay. I'm not saying that's okay. I'm saying that's the reality. And You've... I'm saying taking the choice away from women that are in those situations would be a crime against their lives. Oh, gosh, you know, I hate to come in, but this is the exact same argument she made earlier. Well, unfortunately, this is the case. This is the reality, right? We see that, that some babies are valued more than others. As though it's this grave injustice, yet then she says we must continue to perpetrate this injustice to ensure that it... it, it 
this is where, if it seems frustrating watching, believe, believe me, I thought, am, am, am I missing this? Right. So you're not at all concerned with the lives in those cases that you're terminating, that you're killing. I'm concerned with them, but... Not much. There is a life already that it is in existence, that is in development, that would so, be adversely affected. So I want to be very clear here. You just said that's the way it is. So you support the premise that a life is more valuable in I Lenox Hill Hospital no, no, no. You're taking than it is. My mouth. You said that's the way it is. It's a little bit offensive because I've, as I told you, I have an international relations degree and I've worked for the United Nations and I've worked for the State Great. Department. So I've fought for human rights and people's lives my entire career, my entire education. So you're reducing what I'm saying a little bit. I'm saying that that is just the reality right. of the world. And you use that to define where life begins, correct? You said viability. That's right. your... De okay. Yes. So, the value of human life differentiates based on geographical location according to your premise. That's okay. Not my premise. The premise that was created by colonial powers, imperialists, whoever you want to say. But that's why there's differences in terms of medical developments and, and all of those things in different parts of the world. And I've been all over the world, so I know how life is valued in different places. And that is just sure. the reality. In some it. places, it's okay to take a sex slave. We would both agree that that's completely morally reprehensible, right? I would agree with that. Right. So would we not both agree that geographical location, being born in Lenox Hill Hospital, shouldn't make your life more valuable than someone who's born, let's say, in the plains of Zimbabwe who doesn't have an incubator? I completely agree with you, but I also agree that the reality of the situation is that there's always been a difference in terms of prices on human life. Our country has a, a really great history And you support that, then? Absolutely not. Okay, Again, then it comes back to where does life begin? But where does life that. begin then? Because you just said that's the reality. It is the if reality. you fight for human rights, what about that basic human right? Again, the right Who's to life. Right? The, the right of that child, the right of that baby Why? to be just as valuable in Sudan How does it, as it is what, in, in, in Manhattan. What rights has it, has it been able to... What, 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 what rights as a, as a fetus does it, does it As a baby. Have? Fetus? A as a baby, depending on where it's born, it can be a baby, a viable baby, or it can be okay. aborted. Yeah, depending, or it can be something that's just a death. But that's entirely dependent on where it's born. Right, but that's the reality of the circumstance. You see that long, uncomfortable pause there. It, the, the left is so used to using this this umbrella fetus umbrella term as though it just makes it go away. It, she's used the word repeatedly: dying, cardiac cells ending. Mm -hmm. Death, but it's all okay if you just say it's not. A, I say it's not a baby; it's a fetus. At this point, even though we're discussing a viable baby, depending on where it's born, but say fetus, and all that goes away. Taking that away from a woman who's in those more difficult places, who doesn't have those medical. But do you understand how it's an inconsistent? My point is, your viability it's, line is very inconsistent. Mm, it's not a consistent no. measurement. Do, You're uh, ending a human life no, with its own DNA. It's not inconsistent. I have always maintained viability, and I maintain that there just are geopolitical differences in terms of scientific advancements and in terms of availability. And that's just the reality. And whether if pro lifers are going to go around the world and donate billions and billions and trillions of dollars to and hospitals, they do. They do. Far more than the UN. They do far more charitable work than the UN. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, statistically, you that's know this if you fought for human rights. That's a conversation. Okay, it's a different conversation. It depends on where you are, but um, I'm just saying that that that's always that's been a sad reality, and perhaps with more support and perhaps with more education, that that wouldn't be the case. And that I do think that um, that no you that support no education. Woman... I don't. I don't. I don't understand. That. Okay, let's remove different countries because maybe that's sort of the barrier here. Let's just go to state borders. Let's say a baby right now. Uh, six months old, okay? Six months old, Lenox Hill Hospital, completely viable, right? Best medical technology available. Okay. Same exact baby, okay? Hills of Tennessee, born the same time. One lives, one doesn't. Mm -hmm. All right, so does that make it acceptable uh, or one life less valuable to abort at that term in a pregnancy? Where is it okay, when is it okay to abort? Because we've now determined that viability can vary. Right. So, is, at that point we would say abortion is not acceptable because it could be viable That's outside the, the woman we you were making. The point we were making was You mentioned viability. 
you mentioned vi you said viability. No, we were talking about when does life begin. Yes, and, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, you said viability. Right. So that is determined by where they could be born or when they could be born, right? There are a lot of different circumstances. Right. So do those different circumstances determine the actual value, the essence of human life? Is that your presupposition? If you want to talk about the value of human life in terms of like an overarching definition, no. So here we go. This is where I should have just brought out the fetal chart. She says, if you want to talk about the overall idea of the value of life, no, but the reality, yes. In other words, she's saying that yes, value is determined by technology, by your access to doctors, to your healthcare provider. That determines whether you are a human or not. And, um, that's why the conclusion was was so important because now you see why this this just non-stop circular logic ma makes sense from her position. If you want to talk about the reality, then yes. Okay, so the reality is even though that baby is viable, as you've just agreed, you'd be okay with aborting it if it's in a place where it wouldn't be able to be I put didn't on support. Say that. I said that I believe that life begins at viability, I, and I said that unfortunately. And based on experience, whether you want to not, if you want to take other countries out of it, then that's fine, even though that's the majority of the world's population. Then I didn't, because you said geopolitically. So go ahead and take, put no, it back in. No, put it no, back no, in. That's fine. Uh, put it no, back we'll in for your argument. Put it back in. No, no, it's fine. Put it right back in I, there. I don't need to. Um, I'm just saying that viability is is one thing, life is another, and yes. Uh, lives have always had different values well, and different vi places. Viability is one thing, life is another, but you just said that viability is what determines a life. I said that in terms of, you said it would abortion be okay where there weren't the scientific avail uh, advancements available in one place versus the other. And I didn't... Uh, I was asking, the va is the value of the life determined by that technology or by the era in which the baby is born? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, so to you, that's what determines the value of human Not life? Not to me, to the rest well, of I'm the world. Well, I'm asking you, what is your opinion then? Convince me, because my, my opinion is there's no consistent line. I'm trying to be as clear in terms as possible. There's a unique human genetic code created at conception. You mentioned a heartbeat. That's not your heartbeat, it's not the father's heartbeat. Right. You don't have, when you were uh, giving, uh, when you were carrying your, your lovely daughter there, you didn't have four feet. You didn't have four hands. You had a separate life living inside of you. Mm -hmm. My contention is, of course, that scientifically that life we see begins at conception. DNA is created. You said viability. And then I was uh, just showcasing how viability is determined by geography, mm -hmm. by different points in history. And then you said, I don't support it, but that's the way it is. So I'm asking you, where is your line as to where life begins? My line, again, my line is that viability. And this is like you were talking about before. This is where that kind of cross section occurs, uh, where, where far, far, far right and far, far left meet, where, where culture determines. Yeah, you, your value morality. and morality it comes from your immediate culture. Right, not science. There is no not any truth. intrinsic there value. Is not, no. Um, it, it is remarkable, but again, it, when you don't care if it's a nine month old baby, all of this makes sense. If that isn't your position, almost none of this makes sense. It's certainly More completely inconsistent. Yeah, all, all a smoke screen. Do I support the differences in different places where viability begins? No. But until we have more equality as far as that is concerned, I don't believe in taking the right away from women to make certain decisions. So you've just acknowledged, I just want to be clear, that a viable life, because of its geographic location, you are okay with killing. I'm not okay. I'm saying that's the reality of the situation. So you are against it, but it's the reality of the situation. I'm saying that I wish that that mother could get more support and education, but... But that I... wouldn't change viability at that point. There's a life growing inside of you. This, this baby is six months, let's say five months, let's say seven months. If the, mo the mom could have a PhD, it doesn't change the fact that if that baby's born premature, it won't survive in this area of West Virginia compared to Manhattan. It doesn't change anything. But you're okay with aborting, let's say, at that point. Notice there's no response there. The left is so used to going completely unquestioned where their solution for everything is more education, more health care, more support, more funding. Translation? It, 
for money, stuff, even though it doesn't change anything. And in this sense, that's why she doesn't respond to it, because it's it's the first time I think this kind of a premise has gone questioned with her. It, I, I think it's situational. What I'm not OK with is taking away a woman's right to make certain decisions about her body. And I think that that's but that's not her body. Right. We both established that. But it is, though. But it's not. It's not if it lives in New York and it doesn't live in West Virginia. You're just saying, again, you're saying, well, okay, here I'm against it because it can live no, in a hospital in the Upper East Side, but here I'm not. Up. I'm saying that that's not her body. Is that those differences exist. Scientific advancements, those differences exist. The I completely agree. Support, all of that, those things exist. Mm -hmm. And until we get some more even ground on that, I think it's... But does that change the essence of personhood? Does science change the value of life? Does science change the essence of what a human being is? I think it's proven that it that it has. I mean, we could go way off topic and talk about human hormones or steroids or science. Yes, it, it, it does. Doesn't, that doesn't it determine does a life. Yes, it does. It changes the essence of the life. It changes the quality of that What life. is personhood? What makes a human being a human being, I guess, is a question. What makes a human being... What determines a human life? And, and, and that's just, I feel like we're getting hung up there because I'm just not seeing a very consistent rationale in applying your standard here. Be, it, and it seems it, like we're going in it, circles. If it seems inconsistent, it's because I think it's a dangerous segue into removing rights that shouldn't be removed because there are unique situations and because there are these differences and because there are a lack of resources and because there is a lack of education and saying that, well, this is where life begins, then you're automatically getting into discussion about murder, and I don't think that that's appropriate. Why isn't that appropriate? If, if, it's a, if life has begun, and you're ending that life. Because again, it's about viability, and we have just had a discussion about how that's different in different places, and how life is valued differently in different right. places. Right, but in, in, in my, my point is that with my position, uh, killing that life is very consistent. It doesn't matter whether it's two months or three months or six months. It doesn't matter whether it would li live in New York and not in the Sudan. It doesn't matter whether it would live in West Virginia and not in a hospital in Tennessee. None of that matters in my instance because I'm concerned with the rights of that life. And we both agree that in some instances, that life may be viable. It may not be viable. Over the rights of the person carrying it. No, not over the rights of the person carrying it. I'm simply not allowing, I'm simply not allowing the killing of one life. Not allowing the killing of one life is not forcing, one that you've acknowledged is viable, is not forcing somebody to do anything. Yes, it is. What's important here is we're both discussing a life at this point that we've both agreed is mm -hmm. viable outside of the womb. She wants to go back and forth based on convenience for her argument. That's why this is so um, disturbing. We've both agreed that we're discussing a life viable outside the womb, and she still doesn't care. And this is where it, it snowballs pretty quickly. Forcing someone to carry a baby to whatever term, especially in, in extenuating circumstances so, or where the lack of resources that that it is not realistically viable even to get outside of the womb. So okay. I think I, I think that you know I I. Um, so when would it be okay, I guess, to put limitations? Let's say on abortion. Limitations. What? When is it okay? Because we've, we've acknowledged viability is not consistent, um, but you're okay with it anyway. You're the only one who's valuing the rights of, of one being over another being, the mother over a child, because you're the one who's actually proactively terminating a life, and you're okay with that. I'm simply saying no one has the right to terminate another life, just like you don't have, it's a non-aggression principle. You don't have the right to hurt me, I don't have the right to hurt you. I'm saying that person doesn't have the right to hurt that baby. You're saying it does. So you're saying her rights supersede that of the other life living, growing inside of her. So at what point is that okay or not okay, I guess is where it comes down to. At what point is it okay to violate the non-aggression principle and terminate another life? Um, again, I uh, had made my statement pretty clear on partial birth abortions. I, I personally find them abhorrent. I know of one particular situation that was, uh, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, maybe ugh, an argument can be made, mm, but still. Um, but um, I, I think that that's where the um, education needs to come in. I think that um, 
and, and, and I, I think you're maybe d diminishing a little bit the fact that it's not an easy decision for the mother. It's it's not it's not optimal. It's not it's not something that that any woman actually that I've ever spoken to wants to do. Um, I don't again I think because of the amazing amount of circumstances that a woman can experience and endure that it's dangerous to put any kind of limitations or controls around that because she in the end is the one responsible for that and and, the, and those circumstances and I, I don't think that it's entirely fair to, to judge them without being in her shoes I'm, I'm not sure what people felt about the decision that I made but it doesn't, but that doesn't, again, that doesn't change the essence of what is moral, what is a life. It's like saying, well, listen, I'm against slavery. I think it's bad. But if someone else makes that decision, I have no right to judge their right to choose slavery. Because at one point, that was considered okay. Right? That doesn't, someone's opinion on an issue doesn't change what it is. It doesn't matter what our opinion is on gravity. It doesn't matter what our opinion is on slavery if it's immoral. Indentured servitude, that's immoral. It doesn't matter what our opinion is if that's a life. And that's why it's the only question I would say that really needs to be answered before we have any other discussion. So at two weeks, three weeks, um, not even you know, observable other than under a microscope at the moment of conception, that's where a woman loses all ability to make any decisions for No, 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 you, you act as though I'm anti-choice. That's not true. Well, how can you be pro-life and pro-choice? Sure. I support four choices. Okay. Contraception, abstinence, motherhood, adoption. Okay. The only one I have a problem with is the fifth one, that's murder. Murder. Yes. So you don't even use the word abortion, you just use the word murder. Murder. Okay, killing. What is killing? What's defined? What is what is killing? What's the definition of killing? Killing would be the cessation of... The forcible cessation know, of someone else's life, right? Murder or killing? Well, let's 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 let's. Kill, I'm trying to see. I can kill the tree, but I mean. But that's okay, killing as it would relate to a person. Would it be the forcible termination of someone else's life? Killing. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Now, what is murder? Um, murder would be uh, an aggressive, uh, typically premeditated act um, to. It's the cessation of a formed life. It's killing with intent, right? Well, to simplify it. Otherwise, it's manslaughter or whatever sure. else. Sure. Okay. So we agree on murder. So if that's a life, how is abortion not murder? Because again, at different points, it's not. It's not. It's not viable. It's a consistent pattern that we see throughout nature when things aren't viable, when a mother doesn't have proper resources, that that she takes care of it because of knowing what the experience will be of that child and of her family and her ability okay. to ever starve to death on a, you know, ice flow or whatever. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a pretty consistent um, Let, let me answer your question with see. as much specificity as I can. You said, y yes, I believe that once that unique human DNA is created that's separate from the mother, separate from the father, to an entirely new person, yeah, I don't support uh, the forcible termination. So that's my view to be, just, just so I'm very consistent. So let's look at the fetal development. Where is it okay for you? What point is it okay to kill? That's an interesting question because you're using the word kill and murder. That I don't... Uh, let's remove murder and kill. Let's assume that the abortion is accidental, so it's not murder. Again, I don't believe in, in putting these... At what point is it, I've said unique DNA, it's separate from the mother and father. At that point, the only consistent line, of yes. course, in com comparison to viability Here. is sustainability. Here? You sounded like a question mark. <laughs> well, You're not I, sure. I don't, I don't know. It's this ovulation period, so I'm trying to see where the actual conception is taking care of according, I mean, is taking place according to what you've put in front of me. That's, yes. Okay. So that's that conception, week one. Okay. So where is it okay to, where on this chart are, is it morally okay to, to kill? Morally okay to kill again is a, a difficult uh, question and it's putting me into a box. Okay, where is it morally okay to terminate a pregnancy? Let's use that term. I'm just trying to, because I've answered the question I hope as clearly as I can, conception. So I, I just would like to see a pick on the scale. Maybe that'll determine where we disagree. It's not 
I mean, because I'm looking at pictures of developing babies and I can see their characteristics forming on their fingers and their toes and I understand what's going on and I had a very uh, difficult pregnancy with my daughter so I went into the doctor two or three times a week so I know exactly what Where is it okay? every point. Again, I think it's very dangerous to put these very specific lines and say, okay, for this woman X, this is the point. For this woman Y, this is the point. I don't... I don't agree with putting those distinctions because we don't know what's Where situation. is it okay? We don't know if she's in Virginia. To end we don't this know life. If she's in New York. We don't know if she's been raped. We don't know what the circumstances are. Being a person that suffered, uh, has PTSD myself, you know, the trauma of a rape or, or whenever she's able to actually take care of it, but that's a, a separate question. That's, I think that, that's irrelevant. Where is it okay not, to kill it's that not life? It's irrelevant. I'm saying it's dangerous to put those parameters on but they already abortions. they do exist they do exist the parameters exist whether you like them or not or i like the them or not parameters exist but there, there are laws are still legal there are laws exactly there are legal avenues there are laws so i'm asking your opinion where should the law be where is it okay i don't think there should be one I think that there are unique situations. I don't think that we should. I don't think that we should be mandating women's rights that way. So no. So nowhere here should there be any law. No, I don't think there should be a law. There shouldn't be any law that you can't Based on kill. How I feel about it morally does not change. Not does does not change what her personal experience is. And I it doesn't change what this it. is. It doesn't change what these things are. You're looking right now at but people. But you're supposing that. And I have a real woman standing in front of me telling what's really going on But this her. is real. This happened millions. Many, many millions. I mean, you're talking about each week. That's real. So why is it, at what point is it okay? To, you, you asked me, I said conception. This is where DNA is created. Mm -hmm. It's entirely different. Mm -hmm. You talked about, you know, heartbeat, obviously unique from the mother and father. I've given you a clear answer. And I've given you a clear answer. You haven't. You said you, you, so, you don't, so you don't believe in any limitations at all. I think that there are situations that are so unique that to put laws on them would be to be a travesty and would be a punishment for certain women. Okay. Well... The fact that you're okay terminating this I told you already doesn't that change I find my mind. Per partial birth abortion to be Well then just pick the chart. Point. Tell me where tell me where partial birth abortion. Tell me where it's okay. I told you Pick that a baby and point I and that's an answer. Personally find it extremely repugnant and distasteful, but I know of a very specific circumstance where, you know, I I can't be the judge of that. And I think that it's again dangerous to start this this discourse without having other things like the education and funding in place because when you start how is this laws, not education right here this tells you exactly what kind of development where the baby is at each week is that not education right now you have the education of what that fetus zygote fetus baby to use your terms is couldn't possibly be more informative no, until we have more education that's honest in this country about how uh, contraception works you know, more responsible um, mentoring programs in terms of relationships and, and how, um, you know, uh, conception works until there's a support network that's in place for these women that would have made other decisions. But as you say, you support um, adoption and, and that's a clearer, less, you know, um, guilted, morally repugnant path where a woman has to hang her head for nine months and then painfully give away. Until those things have changed, I think it's dangerous to set these precedents and make these laws because we don't have the support mechanisms in place for the after effect. Sure. Okay. So no abortion laws. Appreciate it. That's your opinion. I'm very honest about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Hasn't changed my mind, but I appreciate you taking the time. Ah, uh, okay. So that was uh, that was pretty tiring. That was pretty exhausting. I, f I find it <laughs> funny that at the end she's just bringing up my points. So whether it's a, whether it's it doesn't take into account whether it's New York or Virginia. That's the whole point. That's yeah. the whole key. That's what I was saying. There's I don't no know how you do this because when you when we take these, I'm far enough away. I don't hear the, what's going on. You just had to live through this twice. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you know that when you said stupid things, I've tried to wring your neck. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it goes against my nature. It I is know. really, and I think it goes against a lot of, of human nature. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why it's sometimes in the moment humiliating where you're going, gosh, I'm really not a good, I'm not able to convince it. But then you realize at the end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nope. I don't know what you say if you were to say to someone, man, the, the Holocaust was really, we, we shouldn't let that happen again. And someone <laughs> says, yes, but some of the Jews were stealing money. So it's like, like, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. You're, so you're okay with it. I don't so have a flashcard for this. I don't know. <laughs>
Well, speaking of flat, oh, by the way, her daughter, it turns, this is, yeah, her daughter, people were taking some, her daughter was a fan, her daughter's daughter. boyfriend in the military was a fan, so, hi, Gia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listen, her daughter was very nice, this is not, this, this whole thing is, is designed to be the opposite of just cable news sound bites, yeah. fighting, arguing, not being productive, but... Um, the, the backflips when when the chart came out. I should have just brought that out earlier. You should have brought that out earlier. One thing I think I think is funny, and you, I think I hope people take away from this is that there's people in your life you think that that office person you're like, oh, don't don't get into this with that person. They really know their stuff. Just what we found even with um, Naomi Wolf, like they don't. These people don't really know their stuff. The ambassadors don't really know their stuff, and then when you get the people out there who uh, who are probably the most aggressive to talk about these things, and you're like, I just I don't have the ammo to go up against this person. You realize when you the circular conversations they start happening, it's because they're just dodging and dodging and dodging. And then even when you brought up the chart, it's like she, she well, was I pissed think it's you a had a chart. It's <laughs> like, oh, uh, and she said, well, uh, now the fact that you're showing this to me, you know, like fingers and toes and like, but, but you know, but I'm talking about a real woman. Like, no, this is a. It's just, it, it is She's so, just pissed you had a clip art. Yeah. It's the, the obfuscation. Oh, no. He's got a Bristol board. <laughs> um, it's the, the obfuscation. And listen, I hope people out there, I, I hope you, you, you watch this, and I hope it's at least inspiring to some degree where you realize, hey, it doesn't matter who it is. It, it, some people are unconvincible. Is that, is that a term? I think that's Some people that can't. I, know, I might be making it I'll up. Google that later. I'm tired. I just had to go through this twice. Some people can't be convinced. Uh, you can still be very civil, and, and at that point, Listen, her daughter's a fan. Her daughter's boyfriend is a fan. It's, it's not necessarily trying to convince this this person, but um, to showcase mm. the the truth that you know to be self evident to the audience. And the questioning, the Socratic method, the, the the letting the questions play out, letting them answer their own questions, it only works if it's an argument from truth. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's what's important to me is I'm in watching this and in conducting this, I'm I'm trying to find out if my argument, if my position is rational, and if my opponent's is is, is rational. And in, in this case, I, as as <laughs> as bleak as it seems, uh, I, the the answer was pretty clear to me. Hey, did you enjoy this video? Here's the thing: you're over, you're here. This is the end of the. So we don't care because you already watched it. But if you really didn't like it and you want to justify it, leave a comment below telling us why you didn't like the video. And if you liked us, let us know and uh, subscribe to the channel because that lets the overlords at YouTube know that uh, you know what, you're all right.